What's up fam, it's Brian Castrillo and I just watched episode 23, the le second to last episode of The Walking Dead. Can you believe we are here? Whew. I don't know what's going to be more emotional. This episode knowing we only got one more left or when we're there and we have none left. Granted, we have Fear the Walking Dead. We got three more episodes. These guys are returning. But... Man, I, I cannot believe we're here, but let's get into this. So, I gotta say the pacing of this episode was fantastic, absolutely perfect. I was t on on edge throughout the entire episode, really riveted by a lot of the conversations that were going on. Um, I think one of my favorite um, in these final episodes that relationships that I, I really enjoyed is the dynamic between King Ezekiel and Negan who has been just incredibly powerful throughout. Um, and we're getting a lot of that needed um, energy to just kind of be released that I, I've been waiting for because these are two amazing characters. And to see them finally kind of get a lot off their chest has been amazing. Now, I love the beginning, how we see, you know, Judith going over. And, and of course, they're bringing back some of the nostalgia with... Um, a lot of the music being played as they're going, reaching all their familiar weapons out of this and just talking about um, just what we've been through to get to where we are now. And I love the scene where um, Judith then, as she picks up her, her sword and, and, her, and her father's gun, and then she gives the hat to RJ, kind of passing it down. And of course, that reminds me of Carl and just the trip... Like, just thinking about where that hat has been from Rick Grimes to Carl to Judith and now, you know, passed down to RJ. And just seeing him wear that was just so emotional. And then seeing Negan and Maggie speak um, as they're, you know, getting ready to leave Alexandria. And, and he's just trying to kind of convey that, you know... It should just be just you and I. Um, we don't need everybody else. We can do this. And Maggie just reminding him, there is no us. Um, just those two together. And it, it kind of makes me wonder, with one episode, how are we going to get them to New York? What is going to be that um, that moment that's going to, you know, kind of bring them together that says, you know, we, we have to do this um, to go on to New York? Then you see, and you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, taking out Pamela together, but she just kind of basically reminds him, you know, I still know what you did. Um, then you see, you know, Daryl and Judith and Judith, um, basically Daryl, you know, being the protective uncle, dad, or, you know, protector for her says, you know, you can't come um, for this. And Judith reminding him who she is. She is a Grimes. She wants. She is just as involved in this as he is. And and then Carol kind of being the voice of reason during this. Just a really powerful moment. Um, really enjoyed that. And and then basically just saying Judith, Judith is saying I am going. And I thought Judith really delivered in this moment. Um, Kaylee Fleming was just fantastic in this episode. In fact, I'm going to say that Kaylee Fleming is, uh, for my MVP, I'm giving co-MVPs because this was really difficult throughout this episode. And I got to give the co-MVP to Kaylee Fleming as Judith and Michael James Shaw as Mercer because both of them delivered in some really crucial, critical, powerful moments um, within this episode. And speaking of Mercer, as, you know, he brings Eugene um, to Max, you know, his sister and and Yumiko and, and basically telling, you know, what we got to do, um, talking about Pamela, but and just kind of delivering the plan of what's going on, telling you got to keep low and just just really being a, a great leader and and really stepping up in this moment. Then we see, after that, we get my favorite, one of my favorite Walker kills now, probably when the train just 
destroys this walker was fantastic. And on Talking Dead, of course, they named it um, How to Train Your Walker, which was fantastic. Um, Rosita and G Gabriel kind of basically planning, saying, and saying, we, she's saying, we got to get Coco. And she's just, she has been fucking fierce in these final episodes. And, and Gabriel just reminding her, you know, being the calm for them, saying, we are going to do this. And kind of just conveying how proud of her she, he is and just, um, and how happy he is. Um, just, I really enjoyed that moment between them. Now we see protests at the Commonwealth kind of breaking out and Mercer kind of delivering to Pamela and basically just telling him how it is, just really stepping up in this moment. The This moment with him and Pamela, I thought Michael James Shaw really delivered in this moment. Um, basically saying, you know, we got to do this. Um, you don't understand, you know, the walls are being breached. Um, we got walkers coming through. But, of course, she is... And Lay Layla Robbins has been a phenomenal villain as, you know, governor of the Commonwealth. But this scene, again, a powerful moment. One of the re big reasons why I have Michael James Shaw as co-MVPs for this episode. Um, <clears throat> and then she, of course, tells the other trooper to keep an eye on Mercer. Um, another, then we see, you know, Aaron's group, you know, they're kind of basically playing the whisperer role, walking with this group, um, of walkers that's heading towards the Commonwealth being based from what we understand on Pamela's orders. But we see, um, Lydia get bit as, you know, they try and go into this, um, camper and she, you know, Luke and Jules get pushed ahead and you see, you know, how much they care for each other. And then Elijah getting pushed ahead and she goes to grab his hand and then she gets bit at the last moment. You see Jerry and Aaron have to cut her hand off or her arm off, which, and by, and by the way, just all three of them in this scene where Lydia has to get her arm cut off, just incredibly powerful um just the emo uh, incredibly emotional um love this scene um <clears throat> excuse me i'm i'm almost better from being sick you know i had a cold um going through this i'm probably about 85 90 percent better but um but and then seeing the scene where you know these walkers are coming up upon Commonwealth reminded me back to the walking dead world beyond where we seen the you know, the CRM kind of blow up that wall and all these walkers came in, just kind of reminded me of them. And and speaking of that, in this moment when, you know, after Mercer was, you know, she took, Pamela told, you know, the other trooper to keep an eye on Mercer. One of the things she says, which I, which really shows how evil and, and kind of on parallel with the other governor from, you know, back from season three, she basically says, divert these walkers into just the common people, we have to protect, you know, the, the powerful people first. And I just really showing how evil she really is. And kudos to Layla Robbins um, and this character. Um, then another great scene that we saw um, Negan speaking with Ezekiel and, and Negan basically thanked him for saving him for, you know, walking in front of those, those rifles and and King Ezekiel being you know kingly as he is um he basically he he's telling um he he well he thanks him back as well um for you know not putting him front in front and said you know and putting himself in front and and one of the things he says is that he was never supposed to be here but yet I smile and of course in the comics, he isn't supposed to be there because he was one of the head, the Pike victims. Um, now we see, you know, our group showing up to this um, place where Mercer had previously said, told him to go, which would bring him into the train station. But 
you know, they were they were starting to figure this out. And and Mercer was kind of figuring this out too, because there was a scene where he right before he's ordering, you know, these guards to come away from where this moment this scene is, um, he's talking to Max who that you know, that other trooper is watching him and but he notices, you know, he you watch in his face, he notices that she's watching him. Um but Max is again or not Max, but Mercer is just delivering in this scene, just really stepping up, being a leader. Um, and But ultimately, he ends up getting arrested. And this is as the walkers are breaching. You see him climbing up. One of them takes, you know, one of the guards on the top. These variant walkers are here. And it, it opens the, the gates to the, the Commonwealth. And they're just, you know, coming in. We got our group, you know, showing up at the train station. And it's an ambush. And fucking Pamela Milton shoots Judith. And my goodness, everything goes <coughs> haywire. Of course, Tyler um, gets shot in the moment. But seeing Daryl, you know, have to carry um, Judith in, of course, brings me all the way back to season two when Carl gets shot. And and it's heartbreaking. There's a, there's a moment where I don't know if Judith is just calling him daddy, just letting him, you know, because he's been a father figure or she actually believes that this is Rick carrying her. But she, anyway, she goes to Daryl and she goes, daddy. And that, oh, that, that scene, that scene had me emotional. And we see our group, um, basically Daryl gets through this, you know, alleyway as everyone's fighting, but the Commonwealth had them pinned and all these walkers are, are coming through and Daryl gets through this alleyway, but the rest are kind of held back. Um, Jules and Luke are back with them. What's going to happen? I don't know, but oh my goodness. But yes, amazing episode. Writing the tense um, moments. Pacing is perfect. Acting was fantastic. Again, shout outs to Michael James Shaw, who plays Mercer, and Kaylee Fleming, who, of course, plays Judith Grimes. They are my co-MVPs of this episode because they were, I felt, pivotal in this in this episode. My, <clears throat> my shout-out goes to Bridget Mason Gray, who is on Talking Dead today. Fantastic. I loved seeing her on there. Um, great question, by the way. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to tell you. Go check her out on there. And I'm going to put in her Instagram and her YouTube channel. you got to follow her on that. Um, and, of course, she is part of the Squawking Dead. Um, you'll, you'll absolutely love her. She She's a great follow. But, again, thank you guys for watching. I can't believe we got one episode left. My goodness. How are we getting – how – what – what I want to know is, what do you guys think? How are we? How is Maggie and Negan going to head off to New York? How is Dar what's going to happen with Daryl, where he's going to have to go to Paris? Is this going to be related with Judith? What is going on? Um, and and of course, Talking Dead reminded me, kind of nonchalantly, if you know, you know. One of my favorite trivia of the entire series is who played. The governor, season three governor, who played his wife? Um, it's my favorite trivia question of the entire series. So that just when I think of obscure trivia, who, what is my favorite question? That is always going to be my favorite question. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of review. Um, as we go through this, we got one more episode. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Hit, um, and if you could hit the subscribe, um, share. Definitely follow Bridget. Um, you might know her as Punky Brewster, but you are going to love her channel, I promise. Thank you guys again for watching. I love you guys. And just like this episode was called Family, The Walking Dead Family for Life, we'll see you on the last one. Oh my God, we're here. Wow.